Our Father and our God, we thank you for this privilege. We ask once again, may you speak to our hearts. Bless us once again and bless us like never before. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And the living souls in the house shout a bigger amen. Master of the spirits, hell of all the principalities and powers, Ebuvetike, Agu Batara Yamara, Oson, Divider, Lightgiver, Omi Potenta, Jiwa, Oya Ibo dogu kari ro dogu Ojo kwe riaja Ojo para kubishi Ojo aswe me kashia Ojo katakuru miri Ojo eji me maji Ojo kono kondwe mago Since the creation of the world You never change your clothes Yes you know the smell You never spray perfume But your presence is an asset Talking about your clothes, just because of me. In the Jeva Sisia Jeneje, in the Kuiha Sisia Kunebu, in the Meha Sisia Meneme, Omekasi Omekasi. Anytime we look for you, in a Gari Neve.
celebration let's lift our hands and begin to magnify the most high god say father thank you for this season of dominion that you have given to us bless the lord for his goodness and his mercies upon your lives the lord have been so good his mercy has endured forever glorify the name of the most high god for there is none like him in heaven and on earth there is none to be compared to him he is the same yesterday and today and forever he is he who is and was and is to come he is the master of the universe, the God of all flesh. Lift your voice and appreciate God if you are a grateful soul in the house. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you, we say. Father in heaven, we bless your holy name. Your children cannot thank you enough for all that you do for us. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the awesome things you do for us. Thank you for the amazing things you do for us. Please, Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit this very hour into your hand. We ask that to all of us here, you will send forth your word in his power and wisdom that will launch us into higher realms of dominion in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the living shout hallelujah. Uh, surely you can do better. Children of God, shout a bigger hallelujah. Amen. I want to bless the name of the Lord God of heaven. For the privilege he has given to me to stand to share his word with his people. May his name alone be praised in the name of Jesus. I also want to appreciate our daddy in the Lord, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, and our mother in Israel, Mommy Folu Adeboye, for the fatherly love and the motherly care they've been showing all the youth. Daddy, our prayer is that God will continue to strengthen you, sir, in the name of Jesus. 
and to all our pastors, our daddies in the house, our leaders, and our fathers that are going to release mantles upon us. May the Lord continue to strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Hallelujah. Beloved, the scripture we've just read does two things for us. It both assures us and instructs us that the will of God for making man is for him to have dominion. It is assuring us in case that we are still in doubt, and it's instructing us in case we do not know that the will of God for making man is for him to have dominion. And it says dominion over the earth. The dominion that God has given man is over earth. Earth is the only domain over which man is expected or mandated to exercise dominion. And our dominion can only be expressed by man that is on earth. Man that is outside the earth cannot express dominion on the earth. In fact, there is no other being outside the earth that can express dominion on the earth. Why is it important that we understand this this way? You see, it is very good and excellent desire for us to want to make it to heaven to the end. But first and foremost, we must work towards dominating this earth. Because that is the mandate God gave to man when he made man. God did not say to make man to come and join him in heaven. But he says, make man that he may have dominion over the earth. Praise the living God. So maybe that is even why God, after giving us the blessings of heaven in the last convention, this very convention of the youth, he is giving us the mandate to have dominion. And over the life of somebody this very evening, we will have dominion in the name of Jesus. We will express dominion in the name of Jesus. You see, dominion is the usefulness of man on earth. Anybody that is not expressing dominion is more like useless because it is the mandate that God gave to man. Hallelujah. The time has come for us as believers to stop being only heavenly conscious and add earthly usefulness to our existence on the earth. It is very important that we take note of that because if we study the case of our Lord Jesus Christ, one of the things that he told his disciples in parables, according to Luke chapter 19 verse 13, Luke chapter 19 and verse 13. He said, occupy until I come. He said what? Occupy until I come. He was invariably telling them to continue the mandate of dominion on this earth until he returns or until he calls them home. He wasn't telling us to be in a hurry to come and join him in heaven. Even in John chapter 17 and verse 15. John chapter 17 and verse 15. When our Lord Jesus was praying for his disciples to the Father, he said, I am not praying that you should take these ones out of the world. In other words, it is on this world, it is here on this earth, that man is mandated to exercise his dominion. So dominion is the mandate and earth is the domain. We might not have the privilege to exercise dominion in heaven. That privilege has been given to us to exercise it here on earth. And that is why I believe God for somebody here. Tonight marks the end to uselessness in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. From this moment onwards, you will be useful to yourself, you will be useful to the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. So dominion is a very special mandate that God gave to man. If we study the scripture, we will see in Genesis chapter 1 that every living thing God created received the mandate to be fruitful and multiply. Only man received the mandate to have dominion. And when he says man has dominion, what does he mean? Man is to take charge of the affairs of the earth. Man is to take control over the affairs of the earth. You see, after God created the heaven and the earth, God did what? God gave himself the control of heaven. Psalm chapter 115 verse 16. Psalm chapter 115 verse 16. It says, the heaven and the heavens belong to God. And now goes on to say, but the earth, he has handed over to the children of men. So earth is God's domain, while, sorry, heaven is God's domain, while earth is man's domain. Why was it man that God handed over the dominion on earth for? Why was it man that God handed over the dominion of earth to? Very simple. Even in our Bible text that we read, the Bible says that God made man in his image 
after his likeness. So God was invariably saying that this is the only creature that looks like me. So what I am expecting him to do, just the same way I am controlling the affairs of heaven, I am expecting this creature to control the affairs of the earth. So it means that for, so far God is concerned, we are his authoritative representatives on the earth. That is why when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 and 10, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 and 10, he said they should pray this way, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He said, thy kingdom what? Come. Thy will be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. So he was invariably asking us to pray that God the Father should give us the grace to run our affairs on this earth just the same way he runs the affairs of heaven. Hallelujah. Somebody is going to do that effectively from this day onward in the mighty name of Jesus. So quickly we look at how we can fulfill the dominion mandate because we have understood that the mandate God has given to man is to dominate the earth. How can we do it? Since dominion is about doing the will of the Father on the earth and not doing as it pleases us. Our dominion is not for us to do what pleases us, but for what pleases the Father here on earth. The first thing we must do to accomplish this is by submitting to God's own authority. By submitting to God's own authority. Beloved, it takes submission to a higher authority to be able to exercise dominion over lesser powers. Wherever God sees submission, he deposits dominion. That is why the scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 6, it says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may do what? Exalt you in due time. So for us to exercise dominion on the earth, we must submit to God's authority from heaven. Our ultimate example to submission and how it leads to dominion is our Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 11. The Bible made us to understand that even though our Lord Jesus was God, it says he still what? Made himself of no reputation. Humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross. That was ultimate submission. And in the end, what happened? The Bible also made us to understand in that same scripture. It says God had highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. So Jesus expressed ultimate submission and the Father rewarded it to, with ultimate dominion. So for us to express dominion on the earth, we must first submit to God's own authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what does it mean to submit to God's authority? It means basically to accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, accept him as your savior, and make him the Lord of your life. That is the only way to, 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 to affirm your allegiance. To affirm your allegiance. That is why it is important for somebody who wants to exercise dominion in life, that is here tonight, who may not have made peace with Jesus, who may not have brought himself under the authority of Jesus, immediately our daddy in the Lord will be making the altar call. Make sure that you are the first to leave your seat and run to the altar to give your life to Jesus. Because that is the first way, that is the first thing to do before you can begin to exercise dominion. Have we not read in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19? Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, you shall do what? Eat the good of the land. The question is, what is the good of our land in this season? That is what? The mandate of dominion. And the only way we can eat of this mandate of dominion is by being willing and obedient. Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul shares with us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. He says, the only way we can deal with disobedience is when our own obedience is fulfilled. The only way we can deal with disobedience is when our obedience is fulfilled. It only means that the only way we can exert dominion is when our own submission, when our own allegiance is confirmed. If you don't believe me, you can ask the seven sons of Sceva in Acts chapter 19 from verse 13 to 16. Acts chapter 19 from verse 13 to 16. The Bible says they went to cast out a demon in the name of Jesus that Paul preached. In the name of Jesus that Paul preached. What was the response of that demon? He said, Jesus, you have mentioned, and I can confirm his allegiance. Paul, you have mentioned his name, I can confirm his allegiance. But he says, who are you? Who are you? Beloved brethren, the first thing we must do 
for us to exercise dominion is for us to bring ourselves under the mighty hand of God. The second thing we must do is by understanding what his will is. To exercise dominion, we must understand what his will is. We cannot effectively represent God on earth if we do not have an idea of what, what he wants to be done. That is why the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed. So the one that must exercise dominion must study to understand what God wants and what God expects per time. And there are two elements that will help us in understanding the will of God. Two elements. One is the word of God. One is the word of God. As the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 16 to 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 16 to 17. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for all these things that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished. So the way the man of God exercises dominion is by giving heed to what? To all scriptures. And the second thing that enables us to understand the will of God is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 and verse 13. John chapter 16 and verse 13. The Bible may not understand. It says, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you into all truth. So for you to understand by truthfulness what is the will of God, what he expects of you in the mandate of dominion, we must have a working relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. Because he says no man knows the mind of God except the Spirit of God. He reveals what? The deep secrets of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The third element that is important for anyone who wants to exercise dominion is by praying fervently. By praying fervently. Beloved, we know that dominion is the expression of power. Dominion means to exercise power. That is one of the ways we have defined dominion. So we see that if dominion is exercising of power, the question is, how does a believer garner the power with which to exercise dominion? The Bible made us to know how. In James chapter 5 verse 16, James chapter 5 verse 16, if we read that place with the amplified version, it says, the earnest heartfelt prayer of a righteous man maketh tremendous power available. It maketh what? Tremendous power available. So for a man to exercise dominion, he must generate power. And that power can only be generated in the place of prayer. It only goes that the more we pray, the more power we generate, and the more dominion we are able to exert. We must pray if we must exert dominion. Because even the enemy is not happy that God has given us dominion. That was why he tried man in the first place. We must pray for us to what? Exercise dominion. The Bible made us to understand in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. It says, A great effectual door has been opened unto me, but the adversaries are what? Are many. There are many adversaries. Yet though the great door of dominion has been opened unto us, there are many adversaries that will not want us to exercise dominion. No. Not when they want the same thing that we have. The only way that we can overcome them is by the power of prayer. Somebody say prayer. Say prayer. God will strengthen us in our various prayer lives in the mighty name of Jesus. So dominion is not for the rebellious and it is not for the lazy. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 says that we man diligent. He says the one that is diligent shall be at the upper echelons of power. He will be where decisions are made. He will have the rule. He will not be ruled. And dominion is about what? Having the rule. The one that has dominion is not a victim of circumstances. Because he's in control, he decides what happens, when and how. To have dominion means to say a thing and that thing becomes what? Established. To say a thing and that thing becomes established. And I am believing God for every one of us here. That from this moment going forth, as we are give, receiving the mandate to have dominion, whatsoever we tell go, we go. In the mighty name of Jesus. And from this moment, hence, whatsoever we tell come, we come. Situations and circumstances shall listen to our voice. In the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly, what are some of the areas where we can exercise dominion? Some areas where we can exercise dominion. One, we can exercise dominion physically. The one that exercises dominion physically is the one that lives in divine health. 
Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. It says, if you obey my voice, none of these diseases that are upon the Egyptians shall come to what? To you. And peradventure you still fall ill. He says, I am the Lord that what? He led thee. Dominion physically. Another one is financial dominion. The financial dominion. The one that has financial dominion is the one that has received the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. And observe that these scriptures are already giving us the conditions for this dominion before telling us what the dominion is. It says, you will remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you what? The power to get wealth. And in Psalm chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. He says, this man shall prosper in what? All that he does. That is financial dominion. Hallelujah. The third way we can express dominion is intellectual dominion. Intellectual dominion. The one that is operating in intellectual dominion is the one that has divine wisdom and good understanding. Psalm chapter 111 verse 10. Psalm 111 verse 10. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And good understanding hath they that keep his word, his commandments. Having intellectual dominion is the ability to be so, have much understanding. So much so that you can confess like the psalmist in Psalm 119 verse 99. Psalm 119 verse 99, it says, I have more understanding than my teachers. Because your testimony is what? My meditation. There is somebody here. You may not have known what it means to be the first in life. From this moment going forward, you are receiving a testimony for a turnaround. In the mighty name of Jesus. We can also express dominion spiritually. Spiritual dominion. It is when a person operating in spiritual dominion has power over all the powers of the enemy. Is the one that is victorious over all the powers of the enemy. Why? Because Jesus said so in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 says, I give you power. Behold, I give you power over everything that is the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Hallelujah. And then finally for now, another area where we can express dominion, which I believe is more important than all this one, is a combination of all of them. Absolute dominion. Comprehensive dominion. The one that has comprehensive dominion is the one that dominates all around. In every facet of life where he is involved, because the scripture says in that Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says, let him have dominion over all the earth. Over all the earth. Whether in the political world, in the financial world, in the entertainment world, in every corner of the earth. God has given to us his children dominion. If you want to uh, exercise dominion over every sphere of your life, rise up on your feet and begin to cry to God. Say, Father, empower me for dominion. Pray to the God of dominion. The one that can ensure that you have dominion over every sphere of your life. Ask the Lord to empower you for dominion. Pray to the God of heaven. Remember that one way to exercise dominion is by fervent prayer. That God should empower you all around dominion. In every sphere of life where you are, where, where you are involved. That from this moment onwards, whatever you say will come to pass. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Father, we want to say thank you to you for your word. Thank you, O God of heaven, for teaching us how to obtain dominion, how to exercise the mandate of dominion. As your children have cried to you, our God, we pray that you will give us dominion in every sphere of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, as students give us dominion, as career people give us dominion, as ministers of your word give us dominion, as business people give us dominion, that we may do your will on the earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody that believes that he has obtained dominion, lift up your voice and shout a living hallelujah.